Fox 61 News at 5 starts now. We are heading into the first heat wave of the summer with temperatures that could be dangerous for your health and for the electric grid. Now at 5, what to expect. And with high temperatures and sunshine, the beach is calling. We talked to families who are doing their best to stay cool on the shoreline. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden making a visit to Connecticut will have a preview of what her visit with the Education Secretary will entail. And one person is dead after a tractor trailer crashes overnight. Tonight, the investigation continues. And we begin with that summer heat wave. We are on a weather watch alert as the temps are climbing already. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Yeah, tonight at 5, we have team coverage as the first heat wave of the summer is likely this week. Tony Black is at the beach at Hammonest at State Park. Matt Karen is at a splash pad in West Hartford. And Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank in studio and Meteorologist Ryan Breton. They are both in our weather watch center. And with the uh, extended heat wave likely, it is important to hydrate and keep cool. Uh, even overnight, it's expected to be warm. Yeah, let's start with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. She's joining us now with what to expect. Hi, Rachel. Hi, yeah, we're already sweating out there today, and this is just the beginning. It will actually feel even hotter and more humid for tomorrow. The National Weather Service has issued a heat advisory. One isn't in effect today, to give you some context, because the heat index can feel like up to triple digits as we head through your Wednesday, and I think for Thursday as well. And this is going to be a long duration heat wave, so settle in. We're in this for quite some time. Temperatures right now in the upper 80s to lower 90s and moderate levels of humidity. Just in case, you know, for fun, we'll take a look at how much hotter it is than this time yesterday when we were dealing with overcast skies, but high humidity. It's 10 to 15 degrees higher, and those numbers are going to tick up a few degrees more for tomorrow. But no showers or storms tonight, none for tomorrow either. Heading through the evening tonight, it's stuffy out there. 11 o'clock temperatures are around 80 degrees. If you're sitting down for dinner, maybe at 7 o'clock outside, you're probably still sweating with temperatures in the upper 80s to right around 90 degrees and overnight lows that will only be dipping back into the 70s. Heading through the day tomorrow, even more humid. By 8 a.m., we're close to 80 degrees. If you have to exercise outside, the earlier the better. Heading towards lunchtime, we're close to 90, which is similar to what's going on outside right now, but it will be even hotter by afternoon with highs in the mid to upper 90s. And as I mentioned before, it's not just about the temperature, but the humidity too, feeling like triple digits as we head through the afternoon for many cities and towns across the state. We'll do it again Thursday before the humidity breaks with showers and storms. We'll time those out for you and get you through the week ahead. Your full forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Rachel, thank you. So as we prepare for this heat wave, it's important to keep in mind these extreme temps can put more stress on your body and on the electric grid. Fox 61's Matt Karen is live in West Hartford after talking to utility companies and the electric grid operator about what to expect as we head through this heat wave. Matt. Yeah. Hi, guys. As you mentioned, stress on the body, stress on the grid. I'll tell you who has no stress today. Tony Black with the premium beach assignment. A little bit jealous of that. But listen, here's the thing. If you want to stay cool and save money at the same time, that's where you're going to want to go. You're going to want to go to the beach, maybe a town pool, or maybe a splash pad like here in West Hartford behind us. Take a look. These kids are just having a ball. Makes you kind of want to be a kid again. But, you know, if you're planting yourself in front of the air conditioning, that's okay, too. This year especially, though, you just got to be prepared to pay for it. What's your plan to beat the heat? Staying inside, hopefully maybe going swimming. Make sure the air conditioner is working and not gonna break on me. And speaking of air conditioners, if you're shopping around for air conditioners, make sure to look for the Energy Star label to make sure your unit will be efficient. The other thing to know, set the temperature as high as comfortably possible. Even raising it by a degree can save you 3% on your energy costs. And look for a unit that has the eco mode button. Press that. And once the temperature reaches the desired setting, it automatically shuts off. And you can follow these money saving tips to add up big savings. Eversource will even do a free energy audit on your home. They'll do on the spot improvements like caulking windows, doors, um, sealing around pipes. Connecticut's electric grid, however, is operated by ISO New England. We are expecting to see you know, demand uh, you know, reach its highest level of the year. So could we see rolling brownouts like on the West Coast? 
We don't expect to need uh, controlled outages to, to help balance supply and demand, but that, you know, it is always a possibility. And ISO New England told me that before it were to get to that point, they have some things that they can do to intervene, including bringing in energy from other regions to make sure they're not throttling anybody back here in Connecticut. For now, we're live in West Hartford. Matt Karen, Fox 61 News. All right, thank you, Matt. Water looks refreshing in the background. I know there. it does. Those it does, kids are so cute. It does here too. So whether <laughs> you know whether you're building sand castles or uh, simply just laying out and soaking up the sun, families found a little respite from the heat at Hammonasset Beach State Park in Madison. Yeah, and as we brace for our first heat wave this season, cooler, cooler temperatures are often found along the shoreline, and that's where we find Fox 61's Tony Black with a tough assignment today. Uh, he got to enjoy <laughs> the weather himself. Look at that, Tony. What a gig. Very tough, you guys, and I have to tell you, if I was in my bathing suit right now, I'd be doing my out here at the water. Beautiful day at the beach, a little breezy, but it's died, died down a little bit since then, so still a lot of families out here enjoying our beautiful Connecticut shoreline as those temperatures go up. So I'm sure if you're planning to come over the next couple of days, there will be lots of room for you. The sounds of crashing waves. Children playing in the sand in the breeze coming off the Long Island Sound, keeping the air cool here at Hammonasset Beach State Park in Madison. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. We were really happy once we got here. There was a nice breeze, so it feels a lot cooler here than it does at home. Families packing the sand to beat the hot temps of the state's first heat wave this season. The waves are really big and it's, you know, it's a nice beach day, so we figured we'd come out and get some, some water, go for a swim. Go for a swim in the sound and even make an adventure out of it. We played Lost at Sea. This family came from Pennsylvania to get lost at sea. Heads up, it's just a game where they pretend to get lost in the ocean and have to find resources to survive. Can't complain, it, it is hot, but we're not used to that in Connecticut, so I like it. While it's hot at Hammonasset, the breeze coming offshore is helping keep temperatures down. We tried to set up some shade, but unfortunately, it's a little too windy for that. A windy day many weren't expecting, but do appreciate. A little breezy, we didn't expect that, but you know, it kind of evens out with how humid it is and hot. We're better to enjoy the heat and humidity than along the Connecticut shoreline. For some, it's even their first time dipping their toes in the water. He absolutely loves it. The state doesn't see weather like this often, so these beachgoers saw the opportunity to soak it in. Take advantage of the nice weather, especially because here in Connecticut, it doesn't last too long. It doesn't last too long here in Connecticut, as he said, but as the breeze has died down, I'm a little mad about that because we brought my paddleboard. It's sitting in the news car because I was anticipating to do all of these live shots showing you my paddleboarding skills out here on the water. Um, I just don't know how safe or um, how clumsy I probably would have looked if I did that. But overall, a beautiful day here at the beach for a lot of families uh, to come out and enjoy the heat and also enjoy the beautiful water that our state has to offer them. Live in Madison, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. Thank you, Tony. A little choppy out there. Well, we're not the only ones dealing with extreme heat. Most of the U.S. is dealing with high temps. Many areas are seeing temperatures well above 100 degrees, and those temperatures are sticking around. Texas could be hotter than it's been in a decade. And with temperatures is expected to climb higher than 110 degrees. Emergency responders have seen an increase in calls for help. We're up probably 50 to 75 runs a day or responses. We have in the last week done, uh, responded to 56 heat emergencies. Uh, so that's been a significant increase. Here and across the nation, excessive heat warnings and heat advisories remain in effect for millions of Americans. Make sure to download the Fox 61 News app. There, you can track the latest temperatures in the area. Find more information on how you can beat the heat. That's there on the Fox 61 News app. All right, new tonight, one person is dead after a tractor trailer crash on I-91 south in Cromwell. The rig was traveling south on I-91 and swerved to avoid a car parked in the right and center lanes. The driver of the car attempted to avoid the tractor trailer but was hit and killed. Uh, the driver of the uh, tractor trailer was not injured and refused medical attention. Anyone who witnessed that crash is asked to call police.
Well, both the president and the first lady will be in the Northeast tomorrow. President Joe Biden will be in Massachusetts talking climate change in Somerset. And first lady Jill Biden will be here in Connecticut, accompanied by the U.S. Secretary of Education. Fox 61's Ben Goldman joins us in studio now with a preview of tomorrow's visit. Ben. Well, Brent, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and Education Secretary Dr. Miguel Cardona will be in Connecticut tomorrow to kick off a summer learning tour. In addition to Connecticut, they'll also be in Georgia and Michigan later on this week. Their week-long tour starts with a visit to a Horizons National Summer Learning Program at Albertus Magnus College in New Haven. Horizons National is a nonprofit providing summer learning programs in 20 different states. Cardona is a Meriden native who was Connecticut's education commissioner when President Biden nominated him for the federal post. The purpose of their week-long tour is to look at summer learning programs that are helping children who fell behind during the pandemic catch up on reading, writing, and arithmetic before the new, new school year begins. He'll also be highlighting programs that are paid for by President Joe Biden's coronavirus relief program. The $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan set aside $122 billion to help schools safely reopen and stay open during the pandemic and address students' academic and mental health needs. Stay with Fox 61 for coverage of the First Lady's visit. We'll have live coverage starting bright and early at 6 a.m. And our political reporter, Emma Wolfhorst, will be on scene throughout the day tomorrow and we'll recap everything right here on the news at 4 and 5 tomorrow. And Dr. Biden and Dr. Cardona are expected to land in New Haven around 1230 tomorrow before heading to Albertus Magnus College. In studio, I'm Ben Goldman. Brent, back to you. All right, Ben, thank you. DEEP announcing today that $4 million will be made available to the public to purchase and install electric car charging stations. This money is part of a $55 million uh, grant that Connecticut is set to receive as part of the settlement with Volkswagen over their violation of the Clean Air Act back in 2015. If you're interested in applying, there's uh, information and uh, an information session on Thursday, July 28th at 2 p.m. You must register for the meeting, and you can do so by visiting our website at fox61.com. Applications are due September 30th at 5 p.m. and you can also visit our website for important application information. Deep also notes that this application is not for multi-unit buildings or workplaces and information regarding that funding will be released at a later date. Governor Lamont signs new legislation regarding vehicle thefts. This new legislation cracks down on repeat offenders. Law enforcement and courts can now provide swifter, more effective responses to juveniles charged with repeated vehicle thefts and other crimes. Among the changes, a new structure of penalties for people with prior offenses, including GPS monitoring for people under the age of 18.